Have you ever said to someone, I'm at your mercy? Whenever we say those words or something similar to that, it's like we're telling those people, you have power over me. You have the power to do whatever you want. I'm at your mercy. That's a pretty incredible thing to say. When looking at the readings this week, I noticed that the theme seems to be around power. They're all about power. Of course, on Monday, you had the, the Chair of St. Peter readings, and, and then on Tuesday, Jesus is giving us warnings about don't be Pharisaic and, and lording it over people in your power. Uh, so they're all about power this week, it seems. And, and it made me think, in light of being in the year of mercy, I, what does power and mercy have to do with each other? And, and that's where I started to think about, well, where did, where did this Lent begin? It began in, in the first Sunday of Lent. We, we hear about the, the three temptations of Christ in the desert, right? Which all seem to be about power. It's all about how you could abuse power, take power to advantage. And Jesus says no to all that. And of course, the second uh, temptation, you know, is the traditional, you know, that one's really about power because the devil's offering Jesus, you know, you can have everything in the world. You can be in charge of all the nations, be in charge of all the people, wealth, riches, titles. And Jesus, of course, rejects that and we say, well, yeah, that's the temptation about having power. But really, I think it's the third temptation that's more about power. What, is, what happens? The devil takes Jesus up to the top of the parapet of the temple and he says, throw yourself down and God will catch you. And Jesus is like, Psh, no way, man, I'm not doing that. And I think the reason why he rejects that so clearly is because for him to do that would be like saying to God, you're at my mercy. I've got power over you, and so I'm going to tell you what you have to do. And in this situation, you're going to have to catch me when I come down from the parapet. And that's what the devil's tempting Jesus to do. He's saying, make your life about putting other people at your mercy rather than putting yourself at the mercy of others. And so Jesus totally rejects it. And look at Jesus' life. We know that it's, it's about that putting yourself at the mercy of others that he models for us, that that's what love and service really looks like. I mean, look at his whole life. It's all about putting himself at the mercy of others. He's constantly in a vulnerable position with the sick, with the, the lame, with the blind, with the sinners, with Protestants. He's, he's always putting himself at the mercy of others. And look what he does on Holy Thursday, right? He gets down on his knees and he washes the feet of the disciples. And he says to them, now go, go and do likewise. Put yourself at the mercy of others. I'm a father of, of three children and, and uh, probably like a lot of parents, um, you know, my wife and I were always looking for new ways and, and better ways to, to be parents and to love our kids. And one way that we came across through an article was uh, to do this thing called special time with our kids, to really let them have our attention. And, and, and really all it takes is even 15 minutes a day where it's just you and that, and that child, undivided attention, 15 minutes. But the catch is they have to guide and they have to direct that play. You as the parent can't control it. You're not the one that's asking questions and, and telling them what to do, but they're directing it. And so this one time I, I was doing special time with Michael, my son who's four, and he decided he wanted to play a board game, which usually, you know, I'm a rule keeper, so I like to ex explain the rules and be like, okay, this is how we're going to play the game, and, you know, if you want to play it, you got to keep these rules. And, and, uh, and during that play, I knew going into it that if, this is, if he's supposed to direct this play, I kind of got to let go of all that. And just let him play by his rules, really, you know, however he wants to play. And that was a real exercise in letting go because, you know, normally I like to keep the rules. But I got to tell you, when I went in with that mindset, which really was to say to my son, Michael, I'm at your mercy. It was incredibly freeing. In fact, it was beautiful. And, and Michael, you know, he just, he played the game how he wanted to play it. And yeah, there was times where we didn't follow the rules. But I didn't find myself being so upset or anxious about that like I might normally because I kind of just said, you know what, I'm going to give myself over to you and just let it be. And I think that that's ultimately what Jesus is trying to teach us in, in, these, in these readings about power. And I think that's what we're trying to be taught in this year of mercy is to say the way to love, the way to life is more about putting yourself at the mercy of others than making other people at your mercy. I mean, look at our world. We're constantly surrounded by p people in power who are putting people at their mercy. And Jesus says, no, that's not the way. I know for the rest of this Lent and even this year of mercy, I'm going to be rethinking what power looks like. And for me, it's going to be about thinking how I can put myself at the mercy of others. That ultimately, that's the power that Jesus teaches us. A powerless love 
that makes us vulnerable to, uh, vulnerable to others and to serving others' needs. And I hope that you can also be thinking about that this Lent as well. How can you be putting yourself at the mercy of others?